often realize the importance of being able to teach those who are new to the industry versus the anxiety, the frustration of not being able to properly diagnose the system, especially when you look and you open up these panels. And if you're looking at these wires and you see all these different components, you're gonna be frustrated. So I always advise, especially if you're new to this channel, if you're new to the industry, don't allow yourself to be defeated by seeing all these different components and all these wires. What One, one statement that I do try to remind myself of is there are people who know how to work on these systems and at some point they had to learn just like you. So I encourage you right now uh, to continue to watch this video, to go through this. I'm going to make it as simple as possible. I'm not going to go as in-depth, but I'm going to look at the key components and kind of give you an idea of how to look at the schematics and just get more comfortable in being able to use the schematics and being able to troubleshoot and go through the wiring of your HVAC heating system. So here, this is going to be the diagram, the schematics for our system. And what I always want to start is start on something that's simple. But before you do that, you want to look at the schematics. If you look here at the bottom, there are some notes. You always want to go through those notes. So right now, if I look at the diagram, I can see right here we have factory wiring and field wiring. Factory, that simply means that it comes from the factory pre-wired. Field wiring means that you are, or the installer, is responsible for this portion. So if you look here, you can see the thicker lines that have the separations. This is going to be my high voltage based on my schematics. That means that I will be responsible for this portion or the installer will. Here, if you look at the thermostat, you can see that we have the thinner lines and this is going to be for my low voltage. So just looking at my schematic, I know we have high voltage and we have low voltage wires. Here you can see we have the same concept. We have 24 volts, that's my low voltage. And here is my thicker lines and that's going to be my 115, 120 volts coming in. I'm gonna start with something simple. If you look here, you have your power supply. This feeds your entire system. You can see here, this is 120 volts coming in. If you look here, you have W and you have your B, which is going to be your black. So we, right now we're gonna look at our wires that are feeding the incoming voltage to our system. Here for safety reasons, I already unplugged my system and it's going to plug into the outlet right there to feed my system the 120 volts. This is my door switch. I have two lines coming off of my door switch. One is going to come to my black 120 volt wire coming in and the other, you can see here, ties into my transformer. These are going to be my wires for my door switch. This is my power supply. If you come here, this is my hot coming in. This wire is coming from my door switch. And you can see if I follow it down, it comes back and wraps here. Other wire that comes from my door switch, you can see here is wire nutted with two other wires. The schematic, my field supplied 120 volts. This is my door switch. We already found the one wire that connects to the incoming 120 volts. This is my wire nut. If you look here, this is the symbol for the wire nut. And now we're going to follow our other two wires coming in. We have one black wire, which is the 120 volts for my transformer that ties into that wire nut. The second one is going to come down here from my fan relay and you can see why that indicates that it is yellow. So here at this wire nut connected to our door switch, we have one coming in from the 120 volt supply and then we should have three wires tied in, two black and one yellow. This is our yellow coming from our fan relay. This is the relay right here. 
So that's our yellow wire. And this is going to be my black wire, which is going to my transformer. And this is your transformer. Right now, if we were looking just at our door switch, you have 120 volts coming in. In the closed position, that would then send the 100 incoming, the 120 incoming voltage from my outlet or breaker. That would send it back down to my switch. And since my switch is in the closed position, it'll send the voltage back up to supply the power here to my transformer. It will also supply power to my fan relay. So here we are at our blow motor and right now we're going to look at our blow motor. You can see here this is the schematic. On the blower motor you have your motor here. We have two wires that are labeled brown. If you look here in the wire coating that tie into the capacitor. And you can see here we have our two wires from our blower motor tying into our capacitor. Here you can see that we have different wires that are coming in. If you look at our symbols right here, you can see this is my blower motor. And then these are some symbols right here. This is my line splice connector. This is gonna be right here. This is where all the wires are tied into this harness that come back up here. And then they go basically to whatever controls each one. Here we have on our blower motor, we have the purple. If you look here at our chart, purple PU. That ties into our harness. And then that comes back up white that ties into our 120 volts. So here we have our purple. If you look here from a bottom view, you can see that we have the black, which is in the back, and the purple right next to it. So it'll be the middle in the back of the harness on the top view. You can see here, this is the back, and that's the white coming back up from my harness. The white wire comes back in and ties in with the rest of my neutrals for my 120 volts that are coming in. It's the neutral, the common. The next one we're looking at here is going to be our blue wire. And you can see BL is blue. You can see here, it says when used, I do not have a blue wire coming off of my harness. Look here, I only have purple, black, yellow, red, and orange. So at this point, I know that the blue terminal is not used. Next, we have our medium high speed, which is my yellow. And you can see here, the yellow wire comes up to the harness, my line splice connector, and then should be taped off. My blower motor, this is my yellow, tying into my yellow. You can see it comes up in the harness, right here. This will be the middle. And on the top view, it'll be middle, top, right. So middle, top, right. And then that goes up here and it should be taped off. And you can see right here, it's taped off. At this point, we know that this isn't even being used. So we can literally, if we wanted to, we could disconnect this wire and then just cap it off. Our next one is going to be our orange you see O that's orange and you can see that when it connects into the line splice connector the harness it goes to the pink and then here on the pink that is also taped off as well and again that's going to control the medium low speed now again before we continue you see here these are basically wires that come over our motor that basically are controlling the speeds of the blower motor but you also want to see here 
on the note it says the leads from the motor may be changed to required speed so you also got to keep in mind that even though it shows here on the schematic for the orange tying into the pink and it's taped off you'll find that it actually will be tied in to a different terminal because we're controlling different speeds for our cooling and for our heat so here we have our orange wire coming off of our blower this is our wire nut and you can see here when we follow it to the bottom of our harness this is where this is the bottom view this is our orange wire so it'll be the top right front view which is going to be my pink lead now on the schematics it shows my pink lead should be taped off but you can see here when you follow the wire that it's actually tied in red wire is going to tie if you see here jumpers down that ties right here into my fan switch if you come here you can see this is my fan switch and you can see that generally my R lead or my low speed is what ties into the fan switch but instead of using the low speed they ended up using the medium low instead be my low speed coming off of my blower motor the red would tie into the red it goes up into the harness you can see here it goes into the back that'll be the top right back here it ties in onto the back of the harness comes up feeds in and you can see right here they taped it off so at this point we've checked the fan switch we've looked at all our wires coming off of our blower motor we've looked at the lines going to our capacitor and here you can see this is where it gets a little bit complicated when things start to tie into each other so let's just keep it simple since we already were working on the fan switch we already found one of our R wires that connect instead of my low speed it connects to my medium low speed which would be my orange wire so at this point we know one of our lines coming off of our fan switch is already connected to the speed of the blower motor and my other wire coming in for my fan switch is going to tie into my fan relay we have our fan speed connected here to my pink lead when you trace that it goes to the top so now we're tracing this one that comes off of the fan switch and you can see here when we follow the wire it goes up here into the corner ties in right here and this is going to connect to my fan relay right here see here my fan fan relay I have my red and I also have my black that's right next to it you can see here this is my black lead that's right next to it and this is our last lead on our fan relay the yellow and we already connected that before up here that tied into our door switch as well as the incoming voltage from our transformer here we're going to continue in our schematics we're going to keep it simple but I want to see in the schematics how things tie in so now we're basically going to take a look at our limit switch and our gas relay. This all ties into our fan switch. This will be our limit switch. This will be our auxiliary limit switch. When we look at the schematics, again in parentheses, it says auxiliary limit when used. You don't have this switch. A lot of times there'll be a switch right here on the top it's pretty difficult to see if you're looking from here but what I've seen a lot of times is they'll stick it right up here and you'll have to find the wires and trace the wires in on this one we have it so we're going to continue with our schematics this is going to be our low center and you can see we have different terminals here on the back this is going to be your load center right here that's your transformer and you can see here we have the W terminal the R terminal, the Y terminal, the G terminal. In the back we have the C terminal which is going to be the common. Now off of our load center we have our W terminal and you can see here this will go to our limit switch. This is the W terminal off of our load center. 
trace the wire. You can see here it ties in to the bottom. Here is our other side and this is going to go from our limit switch to our auxiliary switch. From our auxiliary switch it's going to tie down to our gas valve on the TH terminal. Our auxiliary switch, our wire, and you can see here it ties into our TH terminal. On the TR terminal we have here, it's labeled black and that's going to tie into our common on our load center. Here's the TR. Now you can see here this is not a black wire, it's a white wire and this is why you also have to be careful when you're diagnosing. You want to be able to train your eye as well to follow the wire that corresponds with the terminal. So here we have the TR. It's white and it connects here to the back which is the C terminal right there. Now this is our schematic right here and just looking at this when we first looked at it we just saw a big mess and I'm pretty sure it was overwhelming if you haven't worked on schematics before. If you look here we already looked at our power supply coming in we looked at our door switch and the wiring. We looked at our fan relay. We looked at our blower motor, including all the wires. We looked at our fan switch. We looked at our gas valve. We looked at our limit switch. At this point, the only thing we have left is literally gonna be our low voltage wires that are coming off of our load center. And the purpose of this video is to show you, you got to go step by step and go through the process of elimination. And if you can do that in your mind, you'll be able to go through the wiring of your system. The only real thing that we found, the discrepancy was the fan controls that are for our speeds from our blower motor. But even still, we were able to find out which one tied in and for what purpose because they do leave us notes here at the bottom. These are all our low voltage wires. You can see here, this is our load center. This is the transformer, high voltage to low voltage. And you can see here, these are all going to be our low voltage wires. Hopefully this video wasn't too overwhelming. I do believe that just doing one component at a time will make it much easier for you to comprehend and understand. Uh, you may have to watch the video a few times to kind of get the general concept But I will guarantee you if you just look at schematics and kind of look at how things are wired You'll get better and better in your diagnosing and troubleshooting of your HVAC and heating system If this video was a help if it was informational, please subscribe